Hey everyone, and welcome back to another video. It's March, I can't believe it, but you know what that means. We are continuing on with our birth month flower series and March's birth month flower is the daffodil. So let's get into drawing it and painting it with watercolor. Okay, to start off with our drawing portion of this, um, I'm just using regular cardstock and I have my Pigma Micron marker in a size 05. You can use any pen, it doesn't really matter, and a nice smooth paper. Okay, so we are going to start off by drawing the daffodil. Okay, so I'm gonna start off by drawing um, a forward facing one, so like the center's kind of facing right at you. And I'm just going to do kind of like um, and if you want to do this in pencil first, you can definitely do that. Some lumpy shaped bits going around in a circle. Okay. And we're going to do shading after, so it will look a little less weird. Okay, and we're going to have that little part, those center pieces. Just nice little lines with a circle at the top, okay? And once this is shaded, it will look a little better. <laughs> okay. And then we're gonna draw the petals around. So we're gonna have one, and don't be too perfect with the petals. Make them perfectly imperfect. Um, I'm gonna draw another one over here, leaving a space in between. Like that. And then we're just gonna go in between those petals and create other petals that are slightly behind, okay? Like so. All right, okay. So there is our basic shape of the daffodil. Um, now we're gonna do one that's facing this way and then we'll get into all the detail. So we're gonna do that center part again, but because it's on an angle, um, it's gonna look a little different. So you're gonna do here, you know what, I'll just show you a, a good way to do this with a pencil. You're gonna draw a rough circle, kind of like an oval, okay? And it's gonna be coming down this way if you want to sketch it out first, okay? And then you're gonna have the little lumps and bumps going around this way. So that might be easier for you to, you to draw and visualize a little bit better that way, okay? And then from here you can just scoop under there and then start creating the petals coming down so we'll have one coming this way and then the one that's going to be here is going to be a little bit shorter a little bit fatter and one coming up here maybe this one will be folded a bit so make it a bit thinner and we'll fold that so it's almost like a side view of it one coming up behind here and then maybe one over here, like that, okay? And then we're gonna have the bits that hold all the petals together. Um, actually, no, we're gonna have this one folded, if that makes sense, sorry. <laughs> I don't know if I'm actually helping you draw this or not, or I'm just making it more complicated. Okay, so now I'm gonna go over with my pen. I'm just gonna do those bumpies. Don't make them perfect. Okay, and then you're gonna have those little center pieces there, like that. Bring that bell shape down, and then have And I'm doing another shape there because it's like the petal is kind of folded over. Okay. Like so. All right. And then I think we should just do another little one up here, but just the side view. So I'm gonna start off with the stem just so I know where I want it to go. It's gonna curve slightly at the top. And then you're gonna kind of draw small petal shapes like but it's the part around it where it hasn't even bloomed yet so like this 
okay? And then you're just gonna draw some kind of squigglies at the top there, like that. And now we can draw the stems. So again, for the base where that stem would be connected to the petals, you're just gonna visualize it and then come behind here where you think it would end. And then here, maybe we'll just have it coming down to the side here. And then we can draw some of the, the leaves that come off of it. So long, curving leaves. Have it come behind there. Let's have one up here. Maybe one goes behind this one. And curves up. However you like it, okay? Like so. Okay, and now I'm going to erase our pencil marks under here and we can get to shading. Okay, so this is what's gonna make it really come alive. Um, I'm gonna grab my smaller micron. So the one I was drawing with was a size 0, 05, and now this one is a 0, 01, okay? And it's just a smaller tip, and it's just great for shading. Okay, so I'm gonna start off with this part, and as it gets closer, because that's gonna be further away, it's gonna be darker. So you're gonna have lines coming down from the squiggly parts, but they're gonna really, kind of be really close together. You have some coming up here, really close together through that center. You wanna make it nice and dark because there will be a lot of shadow in there because it's furthest away from the sun. Okay, just nice light lines, not going all the way up. Maybe some can. We're gonna go around those little parts there have some lines coming from the squiggly parts, like the indents. Even more. And make sure they curve with those, the curve of the circle. Okay, like that. And then <clears throat> you're gonna do some of those shading lines coming from behind this circle part. And because those petals are behind the center, um, it's gonna be darker closer to the center, so. Okay, and you can have some coming from the top as well. But anywhere where we'd be kind of like overlapping and creating a shadow. So I'm just going a little bit darker behind there and then creating some lines. Have them different lengths too. You don't want them all to be the same length. Creating a bit of shadow behind there because that this petal is overlapping that one. Again at the top too. It just creates some movement and some folding in those petals. Okay. And this really makes it look a bit more realistic. It's not as, I find when we did the outline, it's kind of like, ugh, it doesn't look the greatest. But once you add the shading, it really kind of brings it to life. that 
And then that last petal. Like that, okay? And now we're gonna do the same thing to this one. Um, so the center is down here, right? So we're gonna have the darkest part by these little ones and every all the lines will be coming in from here. So you won't really see lines here. You'll just see the lines coming out and have it curve with that circle, okay? Have some coming down. You can always turn your paper if you need to, if it's easier. Okay, and then some lines from here. I'm gonna add a bit of shadow under this part because this would be folded over. Nice and dark where those petals meet. And I'm not really gonna have shading right here because this is would be close to the sun and then the shadow would be on the inside here. Okay. Maybe a bit over here, but the tip of this fold would not have shading. Maybe more shadow in side there, like that. But also don't put too much pressure on yourself for it to be like super realistic, okay? Just, just have fun with it. Basically any kind of petal that's behind another one it's gonna have more shadow. So here, there's more shading here. It's where you just gotta pick where you think the sun would be hitting a certain part of the flower. And sometimes it's really great to look at a reference photo for that, or even have the flower with you in real life. Like that. And then this one, we're just gonna have, so it kind of like, has this cool pattern of where this part is like all twisted. And then we're just gonna have some shading at the base of this connecting part. And then in here, like that. And you can darken up the leaves a bit if you like, have some lines, very nice light lines. You know, maybe it's sh shaded a bit behind, like if it's behind this petal, we'll create a bit of shadow with some lines. And then obviously as they all kind of gather together, you'll get some shading. And there you go. It's honestly not that difficult. It just takes a little bit of patience and time. But there you go. There is your line drawing of your daffodils. Okay, so to start, I'm just gonna go through my materials. I have my B watercolor paper. I have my Windsor Newton Common watercolors. I have my Princeton snap brushes in a size 12 and a size six, my water and my paper towel, and now we're ready to go. Okay, so we are going to start off 
just mixing our colors and by mixing them I'm just gonna throw them on my palette because daffodils are yellow and we don't need many other colors besides yellow maybe just different shades of yellow so I'm gonna use cadmium yellow and yellow ochre maybe a bit of cadmium orange too in a bit but I'm not sure yet okay so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start off with that center piece. So I'm just gonna grab the darker yellow ochre and I'm gonna do kind of a squiggly, <laughs> oopsie, um, rounded center like this. And I'm just gonna fill it in like that. And then I'm gonna kind of make a bell shape coming from that like this. Okay, so that's going to be the center looking in. And then this is just the other part, you know, the other part. <laughs> okay, I'm going to go around that squiggly part again. Just making it a bit darker. Um, and maybe a bit darker on the side, like that. Okay, just going to go around it like so. And that's our center piece. And then we are going to move on to some of the petals. So this one is facing kind of the side. And some of the photos that I was looking at, it looks like they overlap each other. So maybe we'll do um, kind of like that layered petaled look because some of these petals look a little bit transparent. So I'm just taking my cadmium yellow and I'm gonna start off with a petal going this way. And I'm gonna fill it in. Make it a little bit more deeper towards the center or the yeah where it, the center of the petal there and then I'm gonna do another petal on this side fill it in so this isn't a very loose painting this is more and not so realistic just a bit more it's in between okay and then I'm gonna do one, hmm, no, I'm gonna leave that, okay? So once those dry, we're gonna go over and do another layer of the petals that would be in between. Okay, actually I might make this a little bit thicker. Okay, so we're gonna leave that to dry. I'm gonna do another daffodil down here, um, maybe more of a, a side view. Yeah, and maybe a bit smaller too. So I'm just gonna make kind of that bell shape there. I do a curve and then that squiggly circle, but it's a bit more of an oval because it's more of a side view of it. Fill it in. Like so. Make it a little bit darker there and then squiggly in the middle. Okay, then I'm gonna do those petals again. Okay, so I'm gonna have one coming down here. And then I'm gonna do one up here, but it's gonna be behind that one. So I'm just gonna Go around it, maybe a little bit of white space if it's still wet so they don't run into each other. I'm going to darken up this side a bit so it looks like it's curved. Okay, deepen that a bit. And then, yeah, okay. So we're going to leave that to dry and then we will do the overlapping petals. Okay, now that it's dry, we can do our overlapping petals. I'm gonna take my cadmium yellow, and in between these two petals, I am going to do another one. So you're gonna get that layered look. One there. One coming behind here. And 
and then one over here, like so. So those petals are nice and layered like that. Okay. And then we're going to do it on the other one. that and then one kind of back here like so okay and then before we do any more detail on these petals we're going to do some more detail on that center piece okay so I'm just gonna take a bit of cadmium orange and mix it here with my yellow ochre and I'm just going to go around the edge of those that center piece like so and then I'm gonna leave some areas for this little bits in the center so I'm just gonna make an outline of them and then I'm gonna take that darker color and go around it so we have those lighter center pieces okay and it's gonna be darker like that and then I'm just gonna wash off my brush and then blend it up here. So I might go back in with a bit more color. Just darken up right there. Like that. Okay. Oops, it is bleeding into that petal. Careful that you don't do that. <laughs> I'm going to do it on the other one. Leave some center pieces there. Um, I actually might take a bit of burnt umber and just darken right there so it gives it a little bit of depth like it's a bit more further down like that okay and then we are going to add some texture to this so I'm just going to start doing some lines just like a little bit like that and on this side lines but shading it and we're gonna go over and do more deeper lines too once that dries just want to make it have a bit of a shadow like that Okay, and we gotta wait for that to dry. I'm just gonna blend this part out a bit more. Okay, now let's see. Okay, let's wait for those petals to dry and then we can continue. Okie dokie, okay, so the petals are dry. Now I'm gonna take my cadmium yellow. I'm gonna add a bit of purple, I know this is kind of crazy, to make a bit of a shadow, shadowy purple shadowy yellow <laughs> okay and I'm just gonna start doing some shading on the petals so it's just some lines and creases like that And you can just use a darker yellow if you prefer. You don't want to mix too much purple with it. Yeah. Just gives it a bit more of a shadowy look. And 
and some at the top too. Just some creases. Like that. And then some in the ones behind. Maybe a bit more for those ones that are behind. Make more of a shadow on this one because it's behind that petal that on the other flower. Okay, like that. And then we're gonna just do the same thing with the inside of the, these ones. We're just gonna add a bit more detail. I'm gonna add a bit more of a dark outline. And then some lines to the inside of this. More lines on the outside. Okay. Oops. Go around. And then do those same shadowy bits on these petals. Very, very light wash of this. So you're not overwhelming it. You're just adding slight lines and shadows. So the reason why I use purple is because it kind of makes it a grayish color. You're mixing um, contrasting colors, but it also maintains that yellow undertone. So if you ever want to make a shadow of a color, just add its um, contrasting color when mixing it instead of adding black or gray. Okay. And then I might just take some yellow. Those centers there. Well, maybe I'll add some white after. I might add some highlight. Okay. Now we are going to do the stems. Okay, which are nice and green. I'm going to take my sap green. Like this. And I'm just going to go behind there. And remember, the stem would be connected to the base of that center, right? So just kind of guide yourself and then have it kind of coming down behind there. Use that centerpiece as a guide of where that stem would go. Okay. You can bring it down. And then we can add some of the leaves. The leaves are nice and long. So we're just gonna have it connected to the stem and you're gonna bring it up like that. Give a little bit of pressure. Maybe you have one coming this way. Goes behind. That. I'm going to have one coming this way. And then 
one coming off this way. I like to go behind these petals. Okay. Like that. And then you can always add some darker green. I'm gonna add some hooker's green. And just drop some of the color in there. Let it bleed. Like so, okay, and there you go. Now, if you wanna add a bit more, um, you know, just darkness to those petals, you definitely can do that too. Um, maybe I will take a bit of black, just a little bit, just to add a bit of more shadow, especially to those centers. Very, very little though, not a lot. You don't want it to overwhelm. Like that, okay? Actually, just looking at it too, we could add a bit of white just for a bit of highlight if you have Maybe for those center pieces, like that. Maybe on some of the petals, just for an extra little something. You don't have to though, this could be just an added step if you want. Just add a little bit of white highlight to some of those petals. Maybe a bit of where the sun would hit around like that. Okay. Like that, okay? Okay, so there you go. There is your line drawing and your watercolor painting of March's birth flower, the daffodil. Thank you all so much for watching my video. I really hope you liked it and I hope you learned something. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and follow me on Instagram and Facebook for even more. Have a great day, guys. Bye.